So, let's not waste any time, Dave. Raw. Amazon Prime? Uh, that's what uh, John Orand talked about Amazon Prime and FX um, as possibilities. And um, Rich, uh, Rich, Green, um, Rich Greenfield of uh, Lightshed said WBD. So those are um, those are two analysts. Um, John Orand is is pretty well connected, but his like he's he's made predictions on wrestling that that haven't happened um, as well. You know, he was one of the ones. Although it was talked about, and it does make sense. You know, when um, SmackDown went to Fox, and it, you know, it was talked about to make SmackDown three hours and do the third hour in FS1, and he had talked about that, and it never happened. But that's not his fault because it was something that was considered. So, um, you know, it's Amazon Prime is certainly uh, in the hunt. I would say WBD's in the hunt and, uh, um, you know, FX. For Amazon sure. Prime is making some massive changes at the end of this month. Yeah. And a lot of times when, uh, you know, people want to make big changes, you know, Peacock, you know, they wanted that WWE network. And I can see Amazon thinking, you know what? This uh, this pro wrestling got a lot of people. I think that uh, the timing. I mean, to me, if I had to make a prediction, it would be Amazon Prime. Yeah. Well, we'll see. So, um, there's. I mean, it's 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 an interesting one. Because um, you, I mean, what will it do to viewership? Um, and we don't know. I mean, obviously, the Thursday Amazon Prime football. Gets a lot of viewers, but it's nowhere close to the number of viewers that uh, every other football game gets. Um, so it's still a long way from matching television as far as viewers go. Um, but if the money's big enough, um, you know, it doesn't necessarily matter. I mean, because they're going to make the deal based partially on money. and You know, the two things are money and exposure, and, and you got to weigh them both. Uh, what's going to get you... Uh, the most eyeballs and and the you know and another key is also not necessarily the most eyeballs but the most eyeballs of people who will spend money on the product which is not always the most eyeballs because that's a, you know people who spend money on the product are generally going to be younger so it's more about younger eyeballs um, older people you know I mean for um, you know, I mean, look back. I mean, obviously, the the, the uh, audience for Raw changed greatly in August for whatever reason. Um, you know, the a lot of over fifty viewers left, and but but the um, under fifty viewers are, are much stronger than they've been. Um, you know, or were, were last year and 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 probably the year before. But business is through the roof, um, and I mean, the key is is the again the reason that would be is you know you look at the raw numbers. And you go, oh, it's it's so much lower than last year. But then the number of people at the shows is so much larger. The number of people who are watching the shows on Peacock is so much larger, and the merchandise sales are larger. So um, you know, it's a hotter pro. It's it's hotter across the board. So the key really is is the right viewers, the viewers that will spend money on the product, which is not necessarily the most viewers, combined with the most money. You know, those are the two keys. So. While people will go, well, maybe Amazon will lose them a lot of viewers, and it very well may and probably will, it may not be that bad of a deal because it may not hurt them with the viewers that matter. Um, and if it's more money. And at the end of the day, it's it's money. But, it, it you know, it's also the strategy of, uh, you know, there's a real strategic move going on WBD. If WBD is willing to pay what they're looking for, I would say the WBD, there's there's a couple of keys of positive there. Number one, the obvious one, really uh, puts eight, uh, AEW behind the eight ball. And number two, um, it's probably where you'll get the most viewers and, and the most young viewers. It would probably be on TBS or TNT, um, especially if it's TNT, you know, with uh, the, sta the station that has the NBA. Um, I mean, it would. It's it's a stronger station for viewers overall than USA. USA's got the wrestling tradition, so maybe that maybe that accounts for something. You know, we'll have to we'll find out. I mean, that's the big key with uh, the NXT deal. Is there's more homes by far that get CW than get USA, 
but USA and and as far as like viewers of the station, um, obviously USA Network has way way more viewers than CW, but that's because of Raw. If you take Raw out of the mix, uh, USA Network and CW aren't that far apart. So. Um, you know, for like, you know, I mean, people even even in NXT, they've been asking, so, so are we going to draw more with CW? And it's like, you know, we don't know. We'll have to find out. I mean, the advantages, you're going to be in uh, 20 million more homes than, and which is a big, big difference. The disadvantages, it's a station that wrestling fans aren't used to watching. Um, so um, that's the disadvantage. So, um, you know, I mean, time will tell. And as far as Amazon... I mean, it certainly, it certainly would be a bold move for WWE to do that, and WWE probably could, you know, um, you know, they they probably could um, do well with it. But then, you know, I mean, you're you're it, it's it'd be interesting because going to CW as far as for NXT numbers is a risk um, for sure. You know, I mean, we don't know; it's it's a big unknown. Uh, Fox to USA for SmackDown, we know is a big downgrade, um, substantial. And if Raw also becomes a downgrade, um, you know that'll that'll work against that could work against you. Well, we got two new hires in WWE and AEW. Lee fitting to WWE for production, and Kosha Irby to AEW as the new COO. Yeah, so Lee fitting. Um, you know, came from ESPN. He was let go in August. Um, and, you know, he did, you know, Monday Night Football. He was, you know, very responsible for college game day. Um, it was an interesting move because almost everybody expected someone from wrestling to be promoted, uh, whether it was somebody in the um, that was already working there. You know, with Kevin Dunn in WWE, which is the prediction, obviously, you know, a lot of people wanted um, – you know them to get Mike Mans or thought that they would make a play for Mike Mansuri, although I think that that would have been impossible. I mean, a lot of people just think, oh, you know, WWE snap its fingers, they can get anyone. And the reality is, contracts are contracts. It isn't that easy when when you know you have that. So I, when I kept hearing his name, I kept saying like he's under contract, um, ain't happening anytime soon. So they went outside, which which makes sense because Nick Khan is the president of the company, and Nick Khan's connections are all in the sports world. And um, so, you know, many times, you know, like whether it was Jimmy Smith, whether it was Adnan Virk, um, you know, I mean, he he made many calls that came to bring people in from the outside sports world into WWE, both office, many office people he brought in were, you know, outside sports world people. So not a surprise, um, you know, wrestling's a different world, but uh, maybe... Um, someone who's very experienced at a different world can impart the real world into wrestling, or maybe, maybe not. Who knows? Uh, as far as uh, Kosher Irby goes, you know, I mean, it's someone who's been, um, you know, r wore a lot of hats, you know, has been, you know, worked at uh, as uh, assistant athletic director, assistant to the athletic director at a number of colleges, had many years with WWE as a live event promoter, um, regionally and um you know was the cmo at the pbr um so so you know that, that's marketing and everything like that and done done a lot of marketing at, in, in other jobs as well was the president of a of a minor league football team in memphis so a lot of different experiences um including pro including working for several years in pro wrestling so um you know obviously his job i mean his key job as coo He's basically being put in the position to uh, replace two full-time people with, with one, which is essentially uh, Dana Massey, as far as the merchandising side, and uh, Raphael Morphy, as far as the promotion side. So, um, you know, I mean, the promotion side for AEW, I mean, both of those are very important jobs, are very important positions. I mean, the merchandise, um, I mean, live arena merchandise, and uh, merchandise in general, can be very lucrative, um, you know, if you have the right, you know, and it's all about creativity of um, merchandise and just getting the merchandise out at the shows and things like that. I mean, as far as promotion, um, you know, a great promoter, and I saw that with Zane Bresloff in WCW at the end, a great promoter cannot sell tickets to a bad product. Um, a great promoter can help sell more tickets to a good product. 
um, and can shake things up for a while for a mediocre product, although eventually the product is going to be what determines, you know, what happens. So, um, you know, he's at mercy. He's at the mercy of the product and how many people want to go. But, um, you know, I mean, obviously the, um, you know, AEW as far as like the, the getting the talent into doing live uh, promotional work in the cities the days before the show has has gotten a lot better and it's paid off with bigger crowds in some places because of that you know even here when when they had Hobbs go everywhere you know I mean they they had you know I mean they walked up a lot of people um, you know but you know it's it's uh, it's a it's it's tough it's tough um, I mean he's walking into uh, you know the you know, really, I mean, how show business, it, it, while not as bad as some people are making it out to be, it is still, you know, when you come to between merchandise, house show, pay-per-view, television, um, you know, the house show business is the weakest of all of them. So, um, you know, you need someone with um, a lot of creative ideas plus, you know, uh, a product that more people want to buy tickets to see. Those are like the two keys. So he's in, you know, I mean it's we'll see how he how he does um i know that uh some people were found that he, he made a tweet the day that uh, vince uh resigned you know and it was basically you know uh responding to the wall street journal thing saying that uh, uh vince resigned says you know we call him legendary which you know whatever um i mean it probably was um you know, the guy resigns for, for, for alleged sexual misconduct. And, uh, you know, you want to call him legendary. And what the hell? I mean, Vince is a legendary promoter. But probably not the day to make that tweet. But, you know, I'm sure he um, obviously probably has a lot of respect for him. He worked for him for years. Uh, which could be good and it could be bad. Because as we've seen with people, you know, a lot of people were, oh, my God, he came from WWE. This is terrible. And it's like, you know. People with wrestling experience um, in this day and age in the United States that have had wrestling experience in any kind of a major league basis all came from WWE because either that, you know, or were, um, if they didn't work in WWE, the last time there was a company that did well um, on a national basis that they could have come from was in like 1998 or 1999. And those people probably aren't around. So having WWE experience is probably positive if you th but some people that were in, in WWE think this is the way to go and it's the only way to go and this is how you do it and those people don't adapt well in AEW so it's going to be uh, going to be interesting uh, to see what happens hey guys did you love this clip if so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.